Howdy guys and gals. Backwires and back rows here, obviously. I'll get through this as quick as I can. So, uh, for all the new people here, welcome. The, the channel's finally finding new folks. It's been really slow growing. We've done this for like seven years, and there's a lot of reasons why the channel's grown so slow, but I had a, a feeling that this trip was going to be popular, and I'm glad that YouTube's cooperating and starting to offer us to new folks, and that those new folks are subscribing, so... Thank you so much for showing up. Uh, we are in Sabula, Iowa this morning. It's a day or two before Halloween. It's very cold. I forgot to bring a winter jacket, but I did bring a one-piece kind of mechanic suit that's slightly insulated, and I'm running the heater. You know, I'm making breakfast, now that all kind of helps. But uh, we are heading south. We're going faster than we wish we had to. There's all sorts of little river towns that have been awesome to look around, but it's it's felt really hurried. And, um, you know, we would have had to have left in September to, to take our time, you know, but we didn't get that luxury. So uh, this video, uh, for the past couple of years, occasionally we, when I say we, it's always my beagle, wavy gravy, and I. We, uh, though she's not very helpful, she's actually sleeping at the moment. We occasionally make some videos called Behind the Scenes and In-Betweens. And I do that because I've heard over the years from folks saying, uh, you know, they want to see more. You know, they, there's actually some people that like this style of video that you're about to see as much or more than the what I would call regular videos. Um, I, I'm very uh, critical of what makes it into a, a main video. And oftentimes that results in like good footage that that uh, I don't think is very interesting. I, I'm pretty hard on myself when it comes to just about everything, but making these videos, you know, I'm often very surprised that anybody wants to watch them, <clears throat> but uh, I'm glad you do. <clears throat> and so what I've done is I go back before I clear the memory on my, my phone and I, I look through uh, the stuff that I didn't include in the regular videos and if it to me feels like it might appeal to folks i put it uh i make these kind of videos behind the scenes and in betweens so so that's what this is it's a different kind of video it's there's a lot less editing there's a lot less kind of you know music and text and stuff like that it's it's kind of a bare bones like this is what's going on while the the adventure's happening you know behind the scenes okay so i probably don't have to explain it anymore so if you like this kind of video, uh, you know, watch it. If you don't, um, I always label them like this is a series. This is the Beagle Barge Beagle Adventure. We're on episode three right now. I'm working on episode four. I'll just call this one episode 3.5, you know, and that's what I usually do. If you see any like the point fives and you don't like this kind of video, just pass it up. You know, you can just come back in a few days and I'll have the, you know, episode four ready to go. Uh, hopefully by this Friday, you know, in the time of making this. So, I just wanted to explain that to folks, and uh, and I, I think that's about it. Uh, 7,500 subscribers now. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> <I'm> so <laughs> we, it's, uh, it's wonderful. So thanks for being here. Thanks for putting up with us, and uh, I hope you enjoy this video. If not, I'll see you in a few days for the regular ones, so just check back. Thank you. Well, howdy, guys and gals. Backwires and Backroads here, obviously. <laughs> I'm going to bring that back. <laughs> so, uh, Beagle Barge, Beagle Build update. Almost ready for Beagle Barge, Beagle Adventure. I would say the barge is about 95% done. There's a few more things I got to do this week with the help of a friend of mine over in Wisconsin. We dragged it down to the marina here. And I'm going to put it in the water. I'm going to park it in front of my house for a couple days. Mostly to work on the trailer a little bit. I want to put a couple of better tires on one side, fix the chain, safety chains, and just make them a little better. Um, they saved my life one time. <laughs> Tell that story someday. And uh, yeah, so yeah, just put it, it's the first time being in the water this whole summer. I've been working out the whole time as you guys have seen. So how about if I turn the phone around, I'll just show you guys what I've done and I'll explain to you the last few things that I need to finish up before we start on the adventure soon. I'll just do a quick walk around on the outside here before we climb up the ladder and show the inside. So I might not have shown you guys that I, I utilized this, this old stuff from the floating dock pontoon. 
It was obviously a bass buggy. I'll probably eventually sand that all off and paint it. Um, but it's, you know, pretty low priority. Most of the aesthetic type stuff is kind of secondary. Um, and this is the same for the back. Just uh, some railing. You know, I would like to do something better with the corners here, you know, and still leave some, you know, access to the cleats. But you get the idea. You know, it's kind of a quick fix with what I have around, and I think it'll work pretty good. And you can see, I'll show you when we get up there, but I mounted a couple things up there. And, of course, you guys have probably already seen. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and please subscribe. And we have probably some of the best content this channel's ever produced coming up here pretty soon for the next, I don't know, eight or nine months trying to do the Great Loop. The Great Loop or die trying, so in this boat... So you've, you've seen the cedar siding. I think that turned out really well. And of course, I've also did the front with the same uh, recycled railing from the floating dock. Um, I put this, this is actually from the original Shanty Beagle. This is some of the uh, chintzy material that was on the siding there, but it works pretty good. It's kind of like a really thin, Kind of fiberglass board and I use that to give it a little more I don't know wave blockage for the front there for the front gate and how about if I crawl up inside I'll show you what we've done here's the big inflatable the the Achilles pretty sure I got all the the holes patched on that it's always a challenge with older inflatables but patch three of them and they seem to be holding um, buckets for for the, the anchor chain and rope I've got two I pulled this one off of the, the fishing machine and I decided that one of the anchors is going to be the plow we'll try that a couple folding chairs a ladder that does work pretty well it catches on to the railing here and goes down the side and I'm haven't tried it yet but I can I'm pretty sure I can pull myself out of the water onto the front of the boat that's really important this boat sits low enough that I probably could do it even without a ladder but I'm getting old it's nice to have and maybe you guys haven't seen the doors the infamous doors the nemesis of this project <laughs> Very basic cabin style doors. I'm st still doing a little adjusting to make them open a little easier. And but you can see that they that locks. I do have a lock that goes right there to lock it when I leave. You know, if I need to. Got a little some driftwood for trim and plexiglass. Is pretty good. Goes to about right there. Let's go inside. Here would be the kitchenette. I am going to sometime on this trip. I brought the wooden cutout that went that, that I cut out of this, and I'm gonna sink this down and put it on top so that the whole countertop is flush when I'm not using the the stove top. Here is one of the heat sources. This is a propane, an old kind of ice, it's from an ice shanty or they're often used as for ice shanties here in the Midwest. And they don't take any electricity. They just have a little simple burner inside, kind of a straight burner. And they heat it pretty good. I mean, I, I've, you know, I'm, I haven't tested it yet. I just installed this the, the stove pipe yesterday so but i've had this in a camper before and it, it did work pretty good so i i'm pretty sure it's going to work but it, i'll test it here in the next day or two i had to get a a hole saw like a, a round drill bit four inch to go through here to put the spacer which keeps the pipe about an inch away from the inside of the wall for you know safety and insulation I'm probably going to put some kind of backing board on the back side there and then 
a piece that goes in right here in front of the window and then the diesel heater will sit on the outside it'll be portable so I can when I only when I'm using it I can pull it out I'll set it outside plug it all in I'll, I'll show you guys I'm actually building kind of a custom one and then this window will open and I'll have an insert that's plywood and concrete board with some holes that'll run the diesel heater uh, pipe into. So if that makes sense, that'll be the secondary one, which I'm working on that now. It should be done, you know, maybe in a week or so. I'll give you an update on that. We've got the storage underneath here. I'll probably play with this quite a bit. I've got tools, coffee, water, dog food, just various odds and ends, foodstuffs. Um, and this is pretty much full all the way back there. There is a shelf right here, and I'm able to put some dishes right here as well. But I probably will move some of those tools up under the nose of the boat, behind those steps, after I get to the point where I'm not just grabbing tools every day. So, you know, it's kind of, it's a bit of a step and a process to move that and get into that space. So keep the tools out until I don't need them consistently. We've got our radio for calling the Lockmasters. I like this little box here. I don't know where this came from, but I'll keep stuff in that. And then I do have a chart plotter that's coming out of the fishing machine, the Hummingbird, and I got a transducer extender extension, and I'm pretty sure it'll reach the back of the boat. I'm pulling that today, and then I'm going to install it Later this week when we're doing some wiring with a friend of mine that's helping me with that. Of course, you guys have seen the diesel. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the solar. That's a charge controller. A little shelf up here where my monocular. I keep my horn. You got to have one of those on board. One of those things that they'll ask for if they ever board you. These are like little mementos. Special things. This I actually found this in the boat. When I first bought it three years ago, it's George Strait Oceanfront Property. And I really believe that God is always giving us signs. You just got to pay attention. And that was one of them. I don't know exactly what it means, but I would say that this barge is probably oceanfront property. <laughs> one way or another. Close this up. Lock the wavy outside. And then when I was on Manitou Island, I found a deck of cards all spread out in the forest. And I just randomly picked one up that was down, face down. I didn't know what it was. I put it in my pocket. I didn't look at it until the end of the day. And it was the two of hearts. And that tells me, it means Wavy and I, we're, we're the two of hearts. And I put it on the wall. <clears throat> I got my pocket constitution. So I can start spewing things at any sort of authority figure that wants to hassle me because they need something to do got the original shanty beagle piece of driftwood and the original painting that made the postcard for the original postcard for the shanty beagle that's based on a picture that i have where i stuck wavy in the hole of a tree on the illinois river and a friend of the channel painted three of those for me and we have three postcards if you want one want me to send you one or Wavy send you one, just let me know. Link below, Wavy's treat link. Then we've got the table. I actually fastened it to the wall. I'll show you. So I cut, I cut that to match up against the wall, and then I put a piece of two by four underneath it to uh, to fasten it against the wall. You know, because boats move around a lot. Some, you know, if you let stuff just flop around and bang around, you know. So it's nice to, I eventually would like to make it so everything on this boat is kind of stowable during transport on the trailer and or in rough weather. We're just dragging it down here and it looks like my dish towel came off of its little hook because I had the door open. So you guys have seen a lot of this, but there's the... The refrigerator, which runs off of solar, seems to be working pretty good. It's probably the biggest draw that I have electricity-wise on the boat, and eventually I'm going to replace it with a better one. 
I use these plastic bins to make fastened, you know, so I can put stuff in them like olive oil and maple syrup and coffee and stuff like that. So more stowable space. Probably put one along the bottom side there. And then uh, this is like silverware and lighters and knives and just odds and ends. A rag, a sock that I use as a rag, flay knife, extra pair of glasses. I'm still going to make some better curtains. Then you guys have seen the bed. I'm going through all of my fishing stuff tonight and I'm going to condense down what I think I'm going to need based on the places that we'll, we'll, we'll come across on this trip and get it down into one uh, fishing case, you know. So go through a little bit of that, a little bit of that, and a little bit of that and kind of pull it all together. <clears throat> Here's some fishing poles, holders, fishing hole, pole stowaways. Keep them out of the way on the roof. A lot of people do that. I got this little one that's <laughs> it's actually a frozen Disney Frozen 2 pole, but it's really nice and small. It's good for just sticking on a scooter or something. I'll bring that along. This is my Benjamin Bulldog high capacity air rifle. It looks like a menacing gun, like something out of Starship Troopers or something, but it's actually an unregulated air gun that's in the same, uh, I guess, what would you call it, the same realm as like a BB gun for now. I'm not sure if I'm going to bring it or not. I'd love to have it. I'm a little worried that if I ever got boarded by somebody, they would come on and see it and freak out, and I'd probably have to announce it first and explain to them that it's a legal gun that, it, you know, for now can go anywhere. So not that everyone follows, follows those rules and laws in today's world, but anyway, I'm probably sounding like a, like a kook in this video, but it's, it is the way I feel and there is a lot of truth to it. So you're going to get the truth on this channel. And speaking of truth, my beloved friends, Suzette and Rob made me this beautiful cross out of driftwood and beach glass. She's an artist. She's a retired uh, teacher that taught art. And she just made that for me. And I'm I'm going to put it in a really special spot here soon. But for now, I'm sticking it right there in a little in my driftwood candle holder. You guys have seen that. I don't know if you've seen this piece of art. I don't know where I got that, but I like it. <coughs> Here's coat hangers. I can put a towel here, shirts, and then I spaced them in such a way that I can open this curtain and this curtain right here closes off the back of the boat. And still, this is kind of my catch-all at the moment. I'm going to organize this. This is going to be like a little bathroom slash workstation, storage, luggable loo. People are always asking where people go to the bathroom on these trips like this, and that is one of the places. This is my pellet gun. I have a, have a little rack there. That's for, I don't know, planking cans. And I can also put another pole there. I have showed you guys already my bookshelf and just odds and ends and all of my various decorations that I am putting on the boat. Try not to completely cover up the walls because they're so pretty, that cedar. Then we got a back door. I know it's amazing guys, finally built some doors. Very similar to the front. I didn't use any driftwood for trim this time on this one. And I do have to trim the bottom a little better so it wants to kick out all the way to the railing. I'll get to that. I'm still working out my how much gas I can carry on board. Once I get it in the water today, I'll, I'll kind of judge where it's sitting in the water and how much weight it can handle in the back. One of the drawbacks of this boat is it doesn't have any flotation on the back side of the fantail. This is literally just a deck overhang. What it does need is some welded up uh, hole extensions. They have names for them. I can't remember at the moment, but they go on back and, you know, give this more flotation on the backside of the boat. 
So for now, I do have to, you know, somewhat be conscious of how much weight I put on the back of the boat. And it already has a, a fairly heavy Yamaha, just for those that don't know, it's a Yamaha 60 horse, four stroke. It's a high thrust. And I'm going to guess it weighs about 450 pounds or so. And uh, it's the perfect match for this boat being a high thrust. It's designed to move a heavy pontoon barge style boat as opposed to going fast. It has a lot of torque. And then I'm bringing along a trolling motor and probably an extra little battery for whatever tender I have. And if I just get into some little spots where I just want to use that to buzz around. When I'm not using that, which is my uh, my dinghy motor, it's a Suzuki 2.5 four-stroke, runs really good. That's another piece of driftwood off of the original Shanty Beagle that I reutilized for the barge here. I'm going to put some lights. I'm going to put one right here with a switch inside that casts into the back of the deck. That's something we're doing this week with my buddy who's good at wiring. And we'll put one on the front too. And I remembered a net. This door locks just like the front does. So I think that's all I can show you for now, guys. How about if I go sit it in the water and we'll see how she floats after all this stuff I've done to it. Stay tuned. And just while I'm thinking of it, guys, here, that is a 1987 Honda Elite 150 scooter. I picked that up about a week ago, pretty cheap and local. And it runs good. I need to put new tires on it. I have them probably at my house in Minnesota by now that came from on Amazon. I have to just kind of spend a weekend and just tune it up and, and replace the belt and everything. And I think that's going to be the scooter that's going to go on the front of the boat. Um, <clears throat> because it's it's really hard I mean basically what it comes down to is if you have a lightweight 49 cc scooter you're really limited to the distance you can go when you go on land obviously if I carried a 250 on up you have the TW 200 it's we're talking a lot of weight and a lot of space these weigh about 185 pounds as far as my research has found which is kind of in the middle of a 49 cc in a, in a bigger bike and they still do about 50 to 60 miles an hour, even 65 I've heard. So that would be enough to get out of people's way and get out of its own way. So let's hope that's a good little scooter to bring on the front of this trip. I'll just show you guys how you do this. It's actually pretty easy just to get it floating. Make sure you get the the back line you stop and you run it up here because you won't be able to reach it on a short dock tie it up and pull the trailer out from underneath it if at all possible launch so the wind is pushing it against the dock just for those that don't know makes it easier okay let's see if she starts it's been several months Oh my goodness, I just love fuel injection. All right guys, we successfully launched. All right, we're gonna see if it still fits under the trestle. so close. It's so scary. <laughs> Alright, let's get her parked in front of the house. I'm already seeing some things I gotta do and fix. I'll show you guys when we stop. Park it at the dock here. Haven't done this in a while.
This is what I mean about fall being so beautiful. I've heard Red Wing's a really scenic little river town. I've driven through it, I've never really explored it, but that's why we're here. We're gonna explore it. doing something a little different here this morning instead of my regular potatoes and eggs got some uh, some vegetables at the store and making a little my buddy from England makes stuff like this cucumber sandwiches You're lazy. When we were out walking around town, I came across this caterpillar. It's actually in the middle of the road, so I didn't feel too bad about picking him up. It seems like a late time of year. Does anybody know what kind of caterpillar that is? I'll try to look it up and see if I can figure it out. He's got this little horn on his on his tail that I think is interesting. It's not a spike or anything, it's just kind of almost ornamental. Here's some that's a good spot for him. I realized that I forgot to bring a funnel to transfer gas from one tank to the other. So I made this this morning. We'll see if it works. That looks like a nice little beach to stop and let the beagle do her thing. Let's head over there. I think I see a municipal dock here in Fountain City. Let's stop for a little bit, walk wavy around, look around for a few minutes. We want to make it to Winona today before we anchor out, but I think we can afford to check this little town out for a, a few minutes. Okay, so this is Fountain City, Wisconsin. I don't know anything about it. Let's go check it out. I see a couple of nice churches we gotta take a peek at. Up the hill.
So we're anchored just north of Lock 6 on the Mississippi tonight. And it's a beautiful night. You can see the little crescent mood up there in the corner of the screen, I think. And I want to show you guys these spotlights that the barges have. They shine it on us just for a second. We're way off the channel. We're in like, <clears throat> you know, five feet of water. They're not coming close to us. But <clears throat> they probably saw us on, on their radar, you know, and they had to, you know, see what it was. So I might get the spotlight once or twice tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep the I'll keep the curtains drawn, but yeah, look at this. And there's another one. That's the lock just around the corner there. And there's another barge coming north. And this guy is headed south. I'll probably get his wake too here in a minute. But pretty cool. The gentle giants just stay out of their way. And you got nothing to worry about. You're always ready to get off, aren't you, Beagle? <laughs> 